Welcome to Faith and Science. I'm Dr. John Ashton. Recently I was talking with some friends and they were telling me about the movie Game Changers. Uh, in fact, I uh, got an email alerting me to this uh, particular movie. Um, it's quite an in- interesting uh, movie that has you know, surprised quite a few people and essentially it's about, it's a documentary about elite athletes and bodybuilders who have changed to a vegetarian or vegan uh, diet. In other words, they've uh, essentially given up eating uh, meat and animal type um, protein foods and gone to plant-based foods. And it's a documentary about how that change has really made a huge effect in their performance and allowed them to perform even better in their elite field. So it's a a really uh, um, uh, eye-opening documentary. If you Google Game Changers video um, and uh, look it up, there's some uh, clips of the uh, movie on, on YouTube. There's also some commentaries, and, of course, some people have... Uh, come up with, uh, you know, comments and, and tried to criticise the movie. And I, I saw one blog where one of the uh, – another blogger actually uh, – and it's on, on YouTube he, – he actually went through um, and critiqued the uh, blog or the YouTube – of um, a guy who was uh, who was a, a doctor, I believe, who was strongly behind a high meat diet and a sort of what they call a paleo type diet, where um, you know they have a, a real lot of um, meat in the diet. And this uh, the second blogger pointed out how the the doctor who was promoting the meat actually had a lot of incorrect data in. Um, his critique of the plant-based diet and how the evidence was overwhelming that uh, for the plant-based diet in, and in actual fact these athletes had significantly improved their uh, performance. It's very, um, very interesting, very, very encouraging because, um, uh, you know, I myself practice a, um, a vegetarian diet um, I haven't sort of, you know, knowingly e- eaten meat for, well, probably 50 years or so. So, and, uh, you know, I really feel the uh, the health benefits f- from that. I, I think it's, um, and from my, my reading, of course, there's just so much advantages for the plant-based diet. And, of course, that was the original diet uh, that God gave to... Um, Adam and Eve in in Eden, and if uh, I read from um, Genesis um, uh, chapter one verse uh, twenty nine, and God said, "See, talking to Adam and Eve, he was God said, see, I have given you every herb that yields seed on the face of the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed to you, it shall be for food." You know, so that was the original Edenic diet. Now, it's very interesting. Uh, account in the Bible of uh, Daniel who became uh, one of the advisors to Nebuchadnezzar, that famous king who built uh, the hanging gardens of um, Babylon that were described as um, one of the you know seven wonders of the ancient uh, world. Uh, and he, uh, Nebuchadnezzar, firmly established the Babylonian Empire. He conquered the uh, surrounding uh, nations and uh, was, was certainly a very important historical uh, king um, back in ancient times, you know, 600 BC, that era. Now, Daniel was one of his um, advisors, and of course, Daniel. Um, went on to become an advisor to successive kings too. But Daniel 
the Bible uh, tells us that Daniel was a, um, a Hebrew noble. He was, uh, when Nebuchadnezzar captured Jerusalem, he took some of the nobility and the, and the youth back to Babylon to uh, be trained um, in, in, in wisdom and this sort of thing, the elite. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar was, um, you know, was certainly quite a wise ruler, very, very obviously very successful and wanted to surround himself with, with learned men. Now, when Daniel, as a, as a young man, we're not sure exactly how old he was, but he was probably in his late teens, early, early 20s at the most, the uh, king had uh, appointed these people, and I'll, I'll read from uh, the book of Daniel, as Daniel writes this account, in chapter 1, verse 5, and the king appointed for them a daily provision of the king's delicacies and of wine which he drank. And this was um, for uh, Daniel to and the, the other captives with him. Uh, he, the king was obviously providing in his mind the best uh, food for them and, and wine for drink. But if we go down a little bit further in Daniel chapter 1, verse 8, I read, But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's delicacies. And in the um, King James Version, of course, it talks about that uh, as being meats, the king's meats, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested the chief of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. The eunuch, of course, was a little bit worried about this, but Daniel... um, convinced uh, the eunuch, he said, look, let's just test it out. You keep feeding the other young men that are being captured, obviously, from you know other nations and perhaps other of the Hebrew men as well. But Daniel and his four friends, they decided that they weren't going to have these uh, the, the king's uh, delicacies, as it's talked about. And, of course, they would have mainly been meats. They would have been the, the game meats and so forth that the... Uh, that were presented at the king's table. Because it points out, please test your servant, uh, reading verse 12 of Daniel chapter 1, we read, Please test your servants for ten days and give us vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then let our appearance be examined before you and the appearance of the young men who eat the portion of the king's delicacies as you see fit, so deal with your servants. So he consented with them in this matter and tested them ten days. And at the end of the ten days, their features appeared better and fatter in the flesh than all the young men who ate the portion of the king's delicacies. Thus the steward took away their portion of delicacies and the wine that they were to drink and gave them vegetables. And, of course, they had water instead of the uh, wine. There's a couple of interesting things there because... um, we know that uh, these young men went on to excel in wisdom, and of course Daniel was then ended up being appointed the chief advisor to Nebuchadnezzar. Now it's very interesting to to look at the the things. The fact that they chose to eat just vegetables suggests that these delicacies were all different types of meats that uh, were being provided. And, of course, you know, tradition shows that that was the sort of common sort of food. And they chose instead vegetables, but they also chose water instead of wine. And this was a, another very um, important decision that they made. Now, uh, the Bible, you know, talks about um, in, in Proverbs and so forth that the that uh, you know wine is a mocker and people were well aware of the effects of of wine and alcohol on the the body but we know a lot more about the effects of alcohol today alcohol is uh, that is found in wine and while some people you know say well wine has some antioxidants in it some polyphenols that serve as antioxidants and and that is correct, um, but so do you know many fruit juices have these antioxidants in them, and, and, and many foods, particularly fruits and vegetables, have these sorts of uh, polyphenol anti- antioxidants in them. Matter of fact, cocoa powder um, 
that has much higher levels of uh, antioxidant and polyphenols in it than in, in red wine. And, uh, of course, it's a, a plant, another plant-based food. And the alcohol, however, is, is very damaging. And one of the reasons is that if we look at the structure of water... And remember in school you learned the formula for water is H2O, two hydrogens and one oxygen. And if we, we draw that, if we draw a little uh, oxygen, little O for the oxygen, and we put a little line out and hydrogen on one side and draw another little line out on the opposite side and put a little hydrogen on it, we have HOH. That's the, the sort of structure of water. And if we look at that OH structure that uh, bonding, that OH bonding, is what we call the cal- cal- in organic chemistry, the uh, characteristic alcohol structure is OH. And so the first of the, the, the true alcohols is methanol with the, a carbon atom, one carbon atom, and the OH group attached to it. And then if we go to ethanol, the one that people drink that's in wine, we have two carbon atoms joined together with an OH hanging off the end, which is the alcohol group. Now, these uh, compounds are actually very poisonous. The methanol, which is just with the one carbon atom, that's wood alcohol it's called, it's it's very poisonous. If a person drank a, a cup of wood alcohol, they would die within a few hours. It's very powerful heart and brain poison. And ethanol, of course, with the two carbons, is not quite as, as toxic. But it is still, is still toxic. If people um, drink um, you know, pure alcohol, a couple of glasses of pure alcohol would kill most people um, in a, in a short period. Some people would survive, but that um, would be, you know, so much alcohol that, um, and this is pure alcohol, of course, that, uh, if, you know, 250 mil glasses of that. And the reason is that alcohol is, damages the body in many ways. It has a structure that, uh, that OH structure, because it's so similar to water and because it's such a small molecule, um, it... When we drink alcohol, it doesn't have to be digested. It's just absorbed directly through the stomach wall into the bloodstream. And once in the bloodstream, it can go to every part of the body pretty well uh, because every it, it is so similar to water in its bonding structure with that OH that essentially wherever water goes, the alcohol can go with it. And alcohol interferes with the oxygen transfer to cells. So it limits the transfer of oxygen to the cells and particularly in the brain. And that uh, is one of the mechanisms that results in what we call intoxication where people begin to they lose in the coordination, they can't reason as well in their minds and uh, it affects the, the operation of their brain. And so we can see that this was a very important decision that um, Daniel made because alcohol affects how our brain operates. And if we want clear thought, we don't want to be under the influence of alcohol. Alcohol begins to slow our reactions. Even just one glass of wine will slow a person's reactions, their ability of their brain to respond and so forth. And that's why, you know, it's very... Um, the have, We have these driving limits uh, for alcohol. Uh, and essentially, if it's more... Than, uh, even one glass of alcohol, they've shown, affects a person's driving uh, response, driving a motor car or truck or something like this. And so, again, by refraining from that, Daniel was in particular protecting his brain. Of course, alcohol has lots of other harmful effects on the body. It's a a class one carcinogen. uh, That's a top of the range uh, carcinogen. And we now know the evidence is now very strong that um, alcohol causes cancer. Matter of fact, the World Health Organization data that was published a few years ago showed that 
every year hundreds of thousands of people die from cancers caused by drinking alcohol. Now, this isn't that they die from cancer and they happen to drink alcohol. These are cancers caused by drinking alcohol. And I think I've mentioned uh, before, uh, you know, one in women, the most common cancer caused by drinking alcohol is, is breast cancer. And so this is, um, you know, pretty serious from, from that health point of view. Alcohol also damages the heart muscle and these sort of things. But more importantly, particularly from Daniel as a, as a young man, alcohol suppresses testosterone production, which is the male hormone, of course. Um, in fact, alcohol stimulates the liver to produce an enzyme, dehydroxinase, which actually converts um, testosterone to estradiol. So it actually, alcohol actually feminizes men. And again, if people uh, want some information on this, if you go into uh, PubMed, which is the National Institute of Health Medical Research Database, that's P-U-B-M-E-D, one word, go into their database, go into the search engine and just uh, enter alcohol and feminisation, you'll see the research papers that come up there. So a lot of um, very you know, serious harmful effects uh, as a result of the drinking wine. So making that decision to not drink wine and instead to drink water was a good uh, decision. Now, I, I haven't actually checked what the hardness of the water is around uh, Babylon there. Um, the River Euphrates, of course, uh, flows through Babylon. I guess that was their water supply, how hard it is. But Again, water often contains minerals that uh, can deliver health benefits because back in those days, of course, the water wouldn't have been um, you know, chlorinated or fluoridated like um, it is uh, today. But again, waters that are hard and have the uh, magnesium in them we know he'll protect against uh, heart disease as, as well. So uh, there's much lower rates of uh, heart disease in uh, cities and towns where the water is slightly hard, richer in magnesium because uh, magnesium helps uh, uh, protect uh, against uh, heart disease. So again, there are many good reasons for choosing to drink water over wine and that was a brilliant decision of, of Daniel despite the temptation, you know, um, that uh, is is there. And I think today uh, many um, young people, teenagers, when they reach the age where their class is adult, depending on the, the state or country where they live, it's usually 18 or 20 or 21 years of age, often celebrate by drinking alcohol. And really this is one of the worst things that they can do because alcohol affects the reproductive organs and uh, it affects the brain. It, it does a lot of damage in the body. I think one of the silliest and most foolish decisions that young people can make is to make the decision to choose to drink alcohol when they become adults. If, you haven't, if you're a young person and you haven't drunk alcohol, you know, praise the Lord for that and don't make that decision. Don't go down that track. And if you are a person who is in the habit of drinking alcohol, and then make the decision to, to stop drinking alcohol. The benefits of not drinking alcohol are huge, absolutely huge. And, and Daniel was blessed for making that choice and, as I said, went on to become a very wise man and the chief advisor to one of the most powerful men in the world in his day. The other thing, of course, is the, the vegetarian diet. Now, I mentioned the movie or uh, the documentary Game Changers, but uh, over the years there's been accumulating a whole lot of evidence for a plant-based diet. As a matter of fact, heard some data just recently where the World Health Organisation now essentially recommends a plant-based, plant food-based diet. Um, as the healthiest diet for us to have. So it's a diet where we get our protein from legumes and nuts and seeds and we have lots of vegetables and, uh, and fruit and whole grains. Uh, not the refined grains, have the, the grains minimally processed uh, and utilise those 
in the food. The, the health benefits are, are overwhelming. We know now that vegetables contain a lot of fibre and, and water and, and that means when we're eating vegetables, if we have a high vegetable plant-based diet, the fibre in the, is very satiating from the vegetables, is, is very satiating and, the, um, and of course they're the high water content so that means we tend to have uh, fewer calories. So essentially the, having a lot of vegetables in our diet helps protect against weight gain. It's a very effective way to keep our, our weight under control. But we're also learning that the uh, fibre in the, um, the vegetables play a very important role in the, uh, maintaining our healthy gut bacteria. Now, the knowledge of the importance of a healthy uh, gut bacteria profile has just exploded enormously over the past five years um, where we still don't have the, the clearest picture of identifying you know, which is the, you know, the, the best particular bacteria but it seems that we are now knowing that a wide variety of, of good types of bacteria in the gut certainly promotes uh, health and we're also you know recognizing that the gut bacteria play an important role in regulating such things as you know cholesterol and protecting against uh, various diseases in, in, in infections and um, um, you know just helping the body's metabolism normalize and one of the important roles that vegetables can play in this area is by providing different types of starches, uh, particularly resistant starches that the good type, uh, good types of bacteria uh, live on. And we also know that these plant-based foods, um, via their mechanism uh, of providing these sorts of, of star resistant starches and fibre, encouraging the best type of bacteria now, encourage these bacteria, particularly in the in the bowel area, produce what we call short chain fatty acids. And these short chain fatty acids get reabsorbed back in the body. And we now know they can play an important role in uh, protecting against uh, many metabolic d- diseases and also cancer. And uh, certainly help uh, protect the, um, the body and digestive system uh, from um, the development of cancers. As well, these uh, plant-based foods can attain so many Im- important a- um, nutrients for us. Now, one of the things that has really uh, been highlighted in recent times is the important role of what we call the omega-3 fatty acids. And, of course, there's a lot of talk about um, getting these from, uh, you know, the, the fish are, and people are being encouraged to eat fish and have fish oil and so forth. But the green leafy vegetables are also very, very good sources of the omega-3 uh, fatty acids. Matter of fact, you know, that's where the, uh, the animals uh, get them from. And seeds such as uh, linseed, uh, hemp seed and chia are three uh, particular seeds that are very, very high in the omega-3 uh, fatty acids, particularly linseed and uh, chia. And the omega-3 fats uh, seem to very strongly protect against inflammation in the body and protect against heart disease. On the other hand, when we... Uh, the Studies are showing from the the meats, of course, that meat. Uh, there are a lot of problems with meat. There's there's the disease problem in with the meat. There's uh, there's potential for disease in the meat. The animal has disease, and some of that may get into us. There's also the issue of the waste products in the animal. So when the animal is killed, it obviously at that time, if it's struggled, if it doesn't die straight away. It was back in those days shot with an arrow or something like that. It's going to release a lot of adrenaline. Um, a lot of other hormones are going to be in, released into the into the meat tissue, uh, particularly into the into the muscle tissue. And there's also the waste products of metabolism 
that uh, as the animal was, you know, running away, being chased or something like that, because I, I guess back then there was a lot of game animals would have, that the king would have eaten. And uh, these would have been provided for the uh, boys. So we're getting those particular toxins and waste products when we eat meat. But also the science is showing now that, you know, the, the meat contains particular compounds and elements that promote heart disease, for example. And we know now that the longest living people in the world are the people who eat the minimum amounts of, of meat uh, in their diets. So the other very important aspect too is that vegetables are alkaline in nature. They have a, an alkaline effect on the blood. Uh, whereas meats and the, are very high in protein and protein has a very acidic reaction. It has a lot of nitrogen and phosphorus in it. And as a result, that needs to be neutralised in the body, brought back in down in pH. And to do that, um, the body neutralises it generally using calcium. And where does it get the calcium from? Well, it gets the calcium from the green leafy vegetables mainly. Um, and if not, it will take it from the bones. And this is something that has come out from these programs, as particularly these bodybuilders and that, of realising as they eat a lot of high-protein food, it can actually leach out the bones and make them weaker. So we see that Daniel's decision there, which was based on the revelation that God had give, given, and although the was was spot on for health, and while all these other foods, the meats and that, you know, can taste very nice and, um, uh, you know, people, you know, can really enjoy them, they're really, really not the best for us. And Daniel, by making that decision to abstain from wine, to abstain from those meats, to have the diet of vegetables and, and the, I presume, legumes and these sort of things that he would have had there, he enjoyed health plus a really healthy mind. The, the Bible gives us amazing directions for health. And to me, this is just power, more powerful evidence that God, through his Holy Spirit, inspired the people that have written this account for us to have. And that's why I'm so passionate about uh, you know, the Bible and, and telling people about the Bible. We are so blessed to have this. So I would definitely encourage you, read the Bible and read that account in the book of Daniel. Read the book of Daniel. It's an amazing book with some amazing prophecies too where God revealed the future of the world. Remember, you can uh, listen to this program again by Googling 3ABN Australia, all one word, dot org dot au. So that's 3ABN Australia dot org. Au, and then click on the listen button and uh, you can look at these, uh, uh, listen to these uh, uh, particular programs. You've been listening to Faith and Science. I'm Dr. John Ashton. Have a great day. been listening to a production of 3ABN Australia Radio.